All right, guys. It is a spectacularly gorgeous, over-the-top beautiful, moonlit, full moonlit night. It is Saturday night in the Point Lonesome Swamp. Sitting here with my little dog, uh, enjoying this gorgeous full moon. This is the longest lasting full moon of 2021 here on Saturday night, December 18, 2021, and I am having a traumatic evening as uh, someone has resurfaced in my life on this gorgeous moonlit night here in the Point Lonesome Swamp. I will let you use your wild imagination. Who could have resurfaced in my uh, in my life? What did someone just call me? Someone just asked me if I was part of the incel community. <laughs> uh, anyway, but that's another rant for another day. Uh, so I'm I'm trying to get my mind off of uh, off of this latest. Uh, return of this bad penny uh, in, in my life and uh, so I'm gonna do I, I guess what, what I do whenever I'm trying to get my mind off my uh, pointless useless existence as a 62 year old celibate uh, sitting around in a swamp with his thumb up his ass. And uh, I have received two uh, comments from uh, tribes members just in, in the past few days, uh, both of them asking me why I don't write, why I stop writing, why I no longer write, and why I make these videos. And the answer is quite simple. I don't write because nobody reads. If I, if there were still such a thing as readers, uh, I might still be writing. And uh, I actually, uh, you know, for those of you who are not aware of, of this, I, I've actually written three books. I have this 800-page novel uh, sitting, I think, on my sister's closet shelf in Vermont. I have a, uh, a story on the waterfalls of Costa Rica, pretty much every one of which has been turned into a hydroelectric plant, you know, so Costa Rica can be the... Uh, you know, the, the UN poster child of clean, clean green, sustainable energy. Uh, don't get me going on that book. It should be uh, the, the hydroelectric plants of Costa Rica. And then I have an e-book, which I've mentioned a few times. I've probably mentioned this book about a dozen times, and that is my book, which you can still find to this day, uh, either on Barnes and Noble or Lulu.com. It's a, you know, a Kindle book. It's not a paper book. It's one of these e-books called Peruvian Plunge by Hambone Littletail. So you're welcome to go on Barnes and Noble or Lulu.com. I'll put the link. Anybody who has any interest in reading anything that I have ever written, it was about my um, exploits down there in Peru in the Peruvian Amazon jungle of, along the banks of the Mother of God River. Uh, back in the summer of 2009. The book will cost you six dollars. I will never see a penny of it. Uh, I will not get a see a penny of it, but you can go on and read that. And uh, as I expect that maybe if 200 people listen to this video, if two of you 
go on uh, and, and get that book. And this is the reason I don't fucking write anymore because nobody reads. All right? My very best friends have never uh, had any interest in, in reading one thing I wrote. I spent four fucking months researching that book. Another two or three months you know, writing it, uh, writing it up. So, you know, six months of fucking work I put into Peruvian Plunge. It's 250 pages to the page. And my guess is in the last 12 years that if, if 300 people have read that book in 12 years or at least started uh, to read that book, uh, I would be absolutely shocked that uh, I can go on here and, and, and spend 20 minutes on uh, making a YouTube video, sitting in a chair, drinking a margarita, uh, looking at a beautiful moon, and, and get more people uh, tuning into my work than if I spent six fucking months. And this is why I don't write, is because you don't read, okay? So anyway, uh, so what I'm going to do is, and, 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 I, and I've mentioned this before, I need to start doing this more now that I am a grumpy old man who has no life. I'm just going to start, uh, I, I did this uh, at the beginning of Humpty Dumpty Tribe years ago, but I'm going to start back into it and I'm probably going to repeat some stories uh, like you really remember hearing them before. So I'm just going to sit here and tell crazy ham bone stories because more people w will hear these crazy stories uh, than will ever read them. And uh, so I'm just going to pick out uh, j just crazy little stories from my life and tell them. And uh, so I guess this will be the the Hambone Chronicles for anybody who wants to listen to some old, uh, lonely old narcissist uh, sit around and talk about uh, when I used to have a life. So I don't know if any of you listening to this, I told a, a story uh, last week about how to silence a barking dog and and in that story, that, well, it was two stories, but the first story I was talking about when I lived in this little uh, town in the Sacred Valley of Peru, it's when I had, I had finished the uh, legwork on my book on Peruvian Plunge, so I, I went and rented this little cabin in the Sacred Valley, this little town of Calca, Peru where I actually wrote the book. So I, I, I spent two or three months there in Calca, Peru. And as I mentioned in that dog barking story was my landlord. And um, <clears throat> my landlord, his name was Kiko, is what uh, he told me his name was Kiko. But I noticed that everybody in the town of Calca, Peru called this guy Campeon, Campeon, which is Spanish for champion. And I had no fucking clue what they were talking about. That this guy was a major fucking bullshitter. Okay. I, 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 I mean, a major fucking bullshitter. And, and always, you know, talking, telling stories about himself. Uh, that, uh, you know, he didn't speak any English that I can understand. I, they just went in one ear and out the other. I understood about a quarter of them. I understood just enough to know that the guy talked a lot of shit uh, about himself uh, and uh, didn't pay much attention to him. Uh, he was my landlord, but the guy... Uh, like so many Peruvians, he, he was a fucking asshole. Let, let's cut to the chase here. He had this dog. It was a female German Shepherd. I can't remember this dog's name. A real sweet dog. Felt sorry for the dog. Of course, you know, they treat their animals like shit. And 
So when I first got there, the dog was pregnant. And then uh, I hadn't been there long, and she had this big litter of puppies. And, you know, I, I remember seeing the puppies nursing one day. You know, she's walking around with her damn tits down to here and stuff. And then maybe when the puppies were about a week old, they just disappeared one day. They just fucking disappeared. And I, and I mentioned it not to Kiko, not to copy own directly, but I m mentioned it to somebody else in town, and they just told me matter-of-factly that Kiko drowned the puppies. This is a, a very common thing of what they do because they won't get their fucking dogs neutered. They will not get their fucking dogs neutered. So what they do, their, their damn dog gets knocked up. What do they do? They take the puppies, they put them in a bag, and they throw them in the fucking river is what they do. Uh, it, it, it's not like Campion uh, cornered the market in puppy drowning. And so... Obviously, I didn't say anything to, to, the, to this motherfucker, but he was on my bad side. But he was both my landlord and the guy selling me my weed. So, obviously, I could not start any shit with Campione uh, about drowning those puppies when he was providing the roof over my head and my marijuana. So, uh, I just tried the best I could to keep my distance from this idiot. You know, I lived in one cabin, he lived in another cabin. They were like, I think he had like four, he lived there, he, he had like four little cabins that he lived in one and he rented out the other. So I lived in one and uh, I, I just, uh, you know, just basically tried to stay out of the fucker's way Working on my book, I was real. I mean, I was severely depressed. Uh, you know, in an absolute horrendous fucking depression. I was trying to write this book. I actually, had this girlfriend who lived in Cusco. She had to work Monday to Friday, so she would come down on the weekend. So at least I would have a little diversion on the weekends when my when my girlfriend from Cusco would come along. So anyway. I had been there right a, it was somewhere between two and three months. I would have to check my calendar. Dealing with, with Campione, the puppy drowning bullshitter. And, uh, but he thought that we were buddies. You understand that he thought that he and I were buddies. You know, if you heard me tell the story about the, um, you know, throwing that, M80 firecracker at that barking dog across the street. So uh, he knew that I hated fucking barking dogs. So he th he had no idea that uh, I thought he was a motherfucker. Uh, so he thinks that we're great buddies. So after I'd been there two or three months, uh, what happened is is a school teacher, a an attractive young female school teacher, moved into one of the cabins, and she had a dog with her who was kind of a mutt, kind, kind of like a mixed German Shepherd. I don't know, just, just your basic Heinz Fifty Seven. I was shocked that uh, Kiko, that Campione, even let this woman move in with his dog. Because other than his own dog, which was basically the guard dog, you know, for the property, other than his own dog, the guy didn't like fucking dogs. Okay, but obviously what he wanted to do was get down this woman's pants. I mean, Kiko, he was a very good looking dude, all right? The, the guy, he was good looking, he was full of himself, macho, you know, all the shit that these uh, Latin women love so much. So anyway, he was hoping to literally charm the pants off of her. But she had this dog. And so she moves in with his dog. And uh, so, you know, I, I met her briefly and we, we barely knew each other. 
uh, you know, she didn't speak any English, and, uh, you know, my Spanish wasn't that great. So, anyway, she moves in there with her dog. And I don't know, she's been there for about a week with that dog. So each morning she would get up and go to school, uh, you know, go off to teach school. She would leave the dog and she would go out. We had this big, tall metal gate. The whole property was uh, ringed in a, in a big stone wall like all over Peru so the dogs couldn't get out. So she would leave this big metal gate. She would go, she would walk about a mile to the schoolhouse, you know, teach school, walk back in the afternoon, and, and rejoin her dog. And she obviously loved this dog. All right, uh, she wasn't, uh, you know, what I'm saying she. It was clearly a dog that she loved. And uh, so she'd been there about a week. And so Kiko thinking that he and I were great buds and, 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 and him believing that I was no great fan of dogs myself, he, when she was, she's gone and he comes up to me, you know, kind of joking, telling me that he is going to kill this woman's dog. He announces to me that he's going to kill the woman's dog. And, and I'm like, oh, really? You're, you're going to kill, I don't know, whatever her name was, uh, uh, Karina. I, I said, so you're going to kill Karina's dog? And, and he goes, well, he, he, he goes, here's what I'm going to do, Samuel. Uh, what he, he goes, when she leaves, to, uh, tomorrow morning, uh, when she leaves, and you know, I'm going to let her walk off to school, then I am just going to let the, the dog out of the gate. I'm going to let the dog out of the gate. The dog is going to run down trying to find her and is going to get run over and killed in the highway. That all I have to do, Samuel, is open the gate. The dog is going to escape and he will get killed Try, you know, crossing the highway, you know, to the schoolhouse. So he was very proud of himself for this plan. And um, and uh, I'm I'm thinking, uh, you know, no shit. So uh, he tells me of this plan uh, that that he's going to let this dog out so it'll get killed when uh, when she's at work and uh, so I'm just thinking I've got to figure out a way to warn this woman that our landlord is going to kill the fucking dog and uh, and, and, and so uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking god damn it how do I get out of it how am I going to uh, figure all of this out and so, what was the, what, what was the, I was just telling this story to Aaron, how did the sequence of, of events, uh, did the secret, did, did the sequence of events unfold uh, in, in, in all of this? So, Anyway, I'm, I'm carrying this knowledge around, figuring out how to, how to deal with this. So it's like the next day, uh, I'm having lunch in the, uh, I'm, I'm having lunch in the, in the little village in Calca, in downtown Calca, in, in one of these uh, little sidewalk cafes. And so I'm sitting there, and who do you think comes loping down the sidewalk. It's Karina's dog out of the damn fence heading right towards the busy highway. Going right, playing right in to, uh, to Kiko's plans. And uh, so here comes the dog coming right by me. So I jump out of my seat and, and, and I grab the fucking dog. I mean, the dog knew me. Uh, you, you know, she she knew who I was, so she wasn't that surprised. So I get her over there, you know, offering her food, and I grab her, 
and tied her with something. I don't know what I used to tie the dog up. So I am sitting at, uh, at, the, at the table with the dog. Finishing my meal, thinking, how the fuck am I going to smuggle the dog back into the thing without Kiko seeing me smuggling the dog back? Uh, and I'm thinking, how the fuck do you get yourself into this, Hema? So who do you think comes walking up the sidewalk from the other direction? You know, the dog was going down the hill. Who the fuck do you think comes walking up the hill? It's the owner of the dog who's known me. You know, I, I, I guess she'd been there about a week. So she sees this crazy gringo with her dog out of the damn, out of the damn fence. Uh, and she goes, I mean, she is mad as a fucking hornet. And she's going, gringo, you know, what the fuck are, are, are you doing with my dog? I mean, she, she's mad as fucking hell. She's grabbing her dog, getting in my face, going, what the fuck are you doing? Uh, you know, she was accusing me of stealing the fucking dog. And, and, and I'm saying, darling, calm the fuck down that we need to talk. But, of course, uh, you know, she spoke no fucking English, and my Spanish was all broken. And, and, uh, and, and I'm saying, lady, I said, you need to understand that Kiko is not who the fuck you think he is. That Kiko no es tu amigo. You know, that Kiko is not your friend. And she's looking at me like, you know, like I'm some fucking lunatic. You know, some goddamn crazy gringo. And I told her, uh, I said, you need to know what's happening. That, that Kiko is trying to kill your dog. I, I, I said, you know, your dog's life is in danger, that this motherfucker's trying to kill your dog. I, I said, you let him go out of the thing, and, and, and I am saving your dog's life. Well, she wasn't believing a fucking word of it. She's grabbing the dog, and I'm saying, darling, I'm saying, absolutely don't run your fucking mouth to Kiko about this. You know, I'm trying to save your dog's life. You need to decide what to do. Uh, I said, but don't, for God's sake, run your mouth to Kiko about this conversation over this dog. And uh, she takes the dog and storms off up to, you know, back up to our little, uh, back up to our little compound, you know, up the side of the mountain. And I'm thinking, motherfucker. So I just hung out all day. You know, trying to hide from everybody, waiting till dark, and I just kind of snuck back home after dark and very quietly snuck into my cabin and shit, going, I, I really hope that this bitch uh, doesn't run her fucking mouth to Kiko, because then I am fucked. If she runs her mouth to Kiko, that I told, you, you can imagine the guy would be ready to fucking kill me. And, and, and these Peruvians, are, they're crazy, man. They will kill you. They'll fucking kill you. So anyway, I'm thinking, motherfucker. So uh, the, the next morning, I, you know, I, I'm getting up, and who do I smack into just leaving for work is Karina. And, of course, she just leaves her dog there. You know, she's heading down the gate. So I go out the gate with her, and I'm trying to say, you know, lady, did you not hear anything I just said? I told you yesterday. And, and you know, she and she gets, I mean, like you're a crazy fucking gringo. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Uh, Kiko uh, says you're fucking crazy. You're a lying sack of shit. And I, I said, please don't tell me that you ran your fucking mouth to Kiko. And she goes, of course I, I, I told Kiko uh, all of this bullshit you were talking uh, about him. And so she wheels around and, and stalks off and I'm standing there. And outside the fucking gate and saying, and saying, Hambone, you're fucked. So now I know that fucking Kiko, you know, and I'm completely 
fucked at this point. It was Thanksgiving morning. I remember exactly uh, what day it was. So it was a Thursday morning. It was fucking Thanksgiving. And I'm standing there going, motherfucker. So I had to get the fuck out of Calco, Peru. Before I, I could not let the sun set on me in Calca, Peru, and I'm a motherfucker. So I go down to the taxi, to the big taxi station, you know, trying to book a ride to back to Cusco uh, that afternoon, where I could go home and pack and all of this shit and sneak out and uh, and and uh, get a ride. To Cusco with uh, you know from one of the taxi drivers so I go down to the to the big taxi stand and, and there's all of these you know Peruvian taxi drivers standing around and I come in there and they go ah oh, you know you're that gringo who lives with Campion and all of this talking all of their Campion shit and, and, and so I'm standing there in this bunch of these fucking Peruvian taxi drivers, and, and, and I say, what is this Campion? You know, I, I, I said, Campion de Vieta de, de Toro, or Como, you know, like, like champion of bullshit is what I said. I said, what is this guy, the champion of bullshit? And when I said that to this room full of these Peruvian taxi drivers who were all talking about Campion, you know, he was the big fucking hero of Calca, Peru. I thought he was a fucking jackass. So I basically, you know, they go, who is this fucking jackass uh, that you're all calling champion and shit? And uh, good God, if, if looks could kill I would have been a fucking dead gringo. Any one of those motherfuckers would have killed me. And they just all just completely fucking uh, had nothing more to say to me. They were just like, like me like, you better get the fuck out of this town, you fucking gringo. And don't don't get in the car with one of us. If I you know uh, if I'd gotten in any one of those taxis, they would have made me fucking disappear down some fucking ravine in the you know in some Inca ruin. And I'm going, what in the fuck? Uh, I, I'm getting myself deeper and deeper. So now I have all of the fucking I I I I have this woman pissed off at me uh I have Kiko pissed off at me now I've pissed off all of the fucking taxi drivers uh and and I have no fucking idea what the fuck is going on all I know is I need to get the fuck out of Calca Peru I need to do it before dark falls and and I can't depend on a fucking taxi driver to do it and I'm thinking Hambone you're fucked so fortunately, there was another gringo living there. So I go over to, to my buddy Dave's house, and, and, and I told him uh, the whole fucking story I just told you, and he's going, oh, he's going, God damn it, Samuel. He goes, my God, uh, you were just fucking determined to get your, to get your ass killed. And he goes, I can't believe that you even made it to my house without, you know, without getting your fucking gringo ass killed. And I said, dude, what is this Compeon bullshit? And he, uh, well, he had internet and, and he goes, come here. And so we go on to fucking YouTube and I'm sure it's still out there. I don't, I can't remember. I don't know what this guy's real name was. I think it was like 1986, somewhere in the mid 80s. Kiko Campione, my landlord, what he was, was the number two rated he was like a, he wasn't a heavyweight boxer. He was a, uh, it was a welter, I think there's a term welterweight or one of those. He wasn't the heavyweight, he wasn't the lightweight, but there's some middleweight thing. Anyway, he was the number two rated, you know, boxer uh, on the fucking planet. My landlord. Well, it was the number two rated fucking boxer on the planet, and uh, 
so in 1986 or whenever, as I say, the YouTube video is probably still out there. He was in Madison Square Gardens uh, fighting this gringo, not a black gringo, a white dude. So he was, they were having the match for the welter, we'll call it welterweight, for the welterweight championship of the world. The, the, the homeboy uh, from Peru versus this, uh, this white boy gringo. He's in Madison Square Gardens. Thousands of fucking people, the entire country of Peru, glued to the thing, waiting for this fucking, uh, you know, waiting for their homeboy to beat the fuck uh, out of this honky gringo in Madison Square Gardens. Well, take a wild guess who won the fight. Here comes an airboat. It's fucking, what, 10 o'clock at night and these motherfucking airboats are still uh, running around out here. So, uh, take a wild guess who fucking won the fight. The white guy. The fucking gringo kicked Kiko's ass right there in Madison Square Gardens on international TV. The whole country of Peru uh, watched this uh, watch this white boy gringo kick the shit uh, out of Kiko at Madison Square Gardens. And uh, so what I was inheriting about 23 years later was, you know, was 23 years of rage uh, built up against, uh, you know, the, the entire country of Peru uh, against the, the, these fucking white boy gringos. And, and Dave is going, going, uh, Samuel, you're fucked. And, and I said, dude, you have got to get my ass to Cusco. And he agreed that I was not going to live through the night. He says, get back to your house, pack your fucking bags. And at 5 o'clock sharp, uh, he had his own private car. Uh, he goes, at 5 o'clock sharp, I'm going to pull up out in front of that gate and I'm going to toot my horn and, and grab your fucking shit and uh, and get in this car, and, and we're gonna get the fuck out of town. Hope nobody sees us, so I can get your dumb ass uh, to Cusco and save your fucking life. So I, I sneak back as quietly as I can. So who do you think I smack into right when I'm coming through the gate? It's Kiko and two of his buddies. One of his buddies already didn't like me. He had made it clear. One, one, one of the two guys he was with already did. So here's Kiko and two of his buddies. They're heading out for the night. And, uh, and Kiko's all oh, friendly. Samuel! Hola! And uh, so real friendly. You, you know, he puts his arm around me. You know, like, uh, you know, he's that kind of guy. And he tells me that he and his buddies are, you know, heading up to this little this little remote cabin up, uh, you know, up in the mountains uh, where we used to go and party. He goes, man, he, he goes, because, you know, uh, he knew that I played harmonica. And he goes, yes, I will. Toca musica, fumo moza, mujeres. You know, talking about all of the, the that we're going to be playing music and we're going to be smoking weed and drinking and, and and all of the and all of the women hanging out and that there was this big party going on up in this remote little. Uh, camp up in the mountains. Yes, yeah, Samuel, you know, come 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 up there about eight o'clock tonight and uh, we'll have a party and all of this, you know, with every intention of fucking killing me. I, I would have gone up there and that is the last you would have ever heard of me. So uh, I say, see ya. I said, I'll see you at eight o'clock. A las ocho. Hasta luego. And, uh, and we do all this shit. And uh, Copione and his two fucking bodyguards, they head out the fucking gate. I say, thank God uh, I, I, I'm alone. So they had set this fucking trap, obviously, to fucking kill me. 
So I go up there <clears throat> to my uh, into my cabin and start packing up. Well, the the, the goddamn cat is there. Uh, Kiko's cat who is pregnant. The fucking pregnant cat who is getting ready to have kittens any day. Uh, which I knew were going to end up in a goddamn bag, you know, thrown into the thrown into the Uribamba River along with those puppies. The fucking cat had had a major diarrhea attack all over the middle of my bed. I, I mean, the the whole middle of my damn bed was just soaked in and damn um, cat diarrhea. And, and, and the damn cat uh, lying on go, what the fuck? So, uh, you, you know, I'm grabbing up my manuscript. It's what, uh, you know, I was writing Peruvian Plunge. So I'm, I'm, I'm stuffing all of this shit into my, uh, into my pack. I'm trying to get my manuscript and all of my notes together and uh, thinking, how the fuck uh, do you get yourself into this? So I got my damn <clears throat> backpack packed and I uh, was waiting there in my cabin. Sure enough, five o'clock sharp, the goddamn, <laughs> the goddamn horn honks. So I throw on my backpack and, and I, I just grab the fucking cat, the pregnant cat. Uh, and, and just grab the fucking pregnant cat in my backpack, ran out through that gate and uh, hopped in uh, through the damn pack and the cat into the back of my buddy's car and said, we need to get the fuck out of here and take some back roads uh, getting out of here. So we got the fuck out of Cusco, Peru. I, I, I didn't even, I didn't have any way uh, of even calling my girlfriend uh, who was uh, totally, uh, I knew where she would be. Uh, so I went, so he drives me to Cusco and dumps me off at my girlfriend's apartment. And, uh, God, I remember finding her down at a, uh, at a trivia night at the fucking pub at the Plaza de Armas in Peru. Unbelievably, she was not there with another man. And, uh, anyway... So that was uh, that was Hambone's escape from Calca, Peru. I have uh, I, I talk about my escape from Salvacion, from Salvation, Peru, in my uh, but you all have to get Peruvian plunge to hear about my escape from Salvation. That's when I wrote that story from Manga Bay, and Rhett Butler was uh, you know emailing me like, dude get the fuck out of salvation that once we publish your story in Manga Bay, you're going to get fucking killed. I got run out of Salvation, Peru. I got run out of Calca, Peru. I've told the story before about how I got run out of, uh, out of Salsay, Peru, but uh, I'll have to tell, uh, I'll, I'll make that another story for another time, even though you've heard it before. So anyway, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <clears throat> Somehow, uh, some uh, miraculously, I am still alive. I, I can sit here, you know, and, and tell my seven years of stories of living in Latin America. Good God Almighty! So, uh, but anyway, if you enjoyed that story. You can find a hell of a lot more just like it in Peruvian Plunge. It will cost you six dollars. But uh, now that I've done, I'm done talking about myself uh, here on this Saturday night. Uh, I'm going to go head out and howl at the moon and listen to the airboats. My guys.